Fantasy cinema has changed. I see it in the visuals. I feel it in the tone and the runtime. It began with the forging of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy, Fellowship of the Ring in 2001, The Two Towers in 2002, God damn it, CG did not age well, and Return of the King in 2003. Each of these movies left a lasting impression on the fantasy of both cinema and television. But they were all of them deceived, for another Lord of the Rings film was released in 2003. In the fires of seduction cinema studios, underground director Terry M. West forged, in secret, an adult parody, and into it he poured all of his lesbians, all of his fart jokes, and references to films that had nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. One thong to rule all. It starred the most unlikely creature imaginable. Flat-chested, natural-looking, natural-acting, Misty Monday. Real name, Aaron Brown. A Throbbit's Tale by Dildo Saggins. It was many ages ago in the shire known as Throbbiton that a Throbbit named Dildo Saggins would become the bearer of the G-string. Throbbiton was a simple place. That was home to the Throbbits, a race of creatures also known as bothlings, or bisexuals. Hell, actually, if they were trisexuals, they would try anything, those horny little bastards. Anyway... Oh, and some really cheap scene transitions. I was in high school when I first heard about this movie. You do not get to know how long ago that was. And it sounded funny, but I was too much of a weenie to watch a movie of this sort. So I missed out. But when I was in my 20s, I saw a YouTube video that showed a medley of clips from this movie that was so funny, it convinced me to order it. So I did. Um, I put the DVD away, expecting to watch it with friends but life kept getting in the way. One day, after a long, stressful day at work, I said, screw it. I popped a Mike's Hard Lemonade, I popped Lord of the G-Strings in the DVD player, and I was laughing within the first scene. Which is not to say that this is comedy gold. It's not. The bulk of the movie is very boring, with most of the attempts at comedy falling very flat. But the few jokes that do land are unforgettable, and pretty much any scene with Michael R. Thomas as Smirnoff the Wizard is going to be worth a watch. This young dildo is the most powerful erotic weapon in all of Diddle Earth. First things first, yes, this is exactly the kind of movie that you think it is. Well, sort of. But what I got here is the R-rated version, which is pretty much just a raunchy comedy. There is an extended version that's unrated, but if you want a review of that, I can't really help you since I'm not really the target audience. I apologize for my camera looking off-center. Uh, this is the best I could do in five minutes. Life is short, and this is Lord of the G-Strings. I'm not going to waste my time. So anyway, let's talk about the plot. In the mythical land of Diddle Earth, a dominatrix wraith named Horsebank has crafted an evil g-string of untold powers. A last alliance of knights, vikings, and pirates marches onward to bagpipe music led by one general uptight, only to find that a pair of lesbian elves has rented out this battlefield for their own purposes. Luckily, the director's backyard is big enough for everyone, and the battle soon begins. <laughs> Now, as you can see, this is not exactly comedy gold, but it's the type of dumb humor that's fun to turn your brain off to after a long day. After some technical difficulties and lost contact lenses, the battle comes to an abrupt end. We're in the middle of the battle right now, oh. and this is just the prologue. Uh -oh. mm. 
I did not add that sound effect, by the way. That's in the movie. The G-string passes ownership a few more times before cutting to Misty. She introduces us to the Throbbits and Smirnoff the Wizard. Huh? Smirnoff, you've returned! What? Who the hell are you? It's me, silly Dildo Saggins. Dildo Saggins? Well, what are you doing so far away from Throbaton? Smirnoff, you're in Throbaton. Ah, oh, goddammit! I knew I was going the wrong way! How Smirnoff came into possession of the G-string is never explained, but to be fair, it's not like the drunk wizard himself can remember either. In any case, we are then introduced to the two sidekicks, Horny and Spam. Spam, 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 Spam! spam. <laughs> now, let me guess. You got two great fat parents who hate each other, right? <laughs> yeah, so? By the way, if you're wondering about that skull staff, I have no idea. I'm told it doesn't mean anything dirty, and I suspect it's just a free prop they happen to have on hand. Actually, I think it's from a Russian fairy tale called Vasilia the Brave. You can learn about literature in the weirdest places. And now, the passing of the G-string. Young Dildo, I have a gift to bestow upon you. Really? It's in one of my pockets. You want to look for it? Okay. <laughs> what are you stopping for, Gil? You're this far away from the gift. Come on, back in the pocket, back in the pocket. What's this? Oh, that shit. This is the legendary G-string that Horsebank wielded before she fell. What the hell was I supposed to do with this? Oh, yes, yes, Jesus Christ. The ends of the realm, yada, 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 yada. As in Lord of the Rings, the wizard sends them on their quest, agreeing to meet them up later at a pub. The next 30 to 40 minutes is just the three throbbits trekking through the forest, meeting a variety of characters, none of which are direct spoofs of anyone from Lord of the Rings. Even when these skits are vaguely amusing, they still go on far too long. First, they run into these three MILFs, who I suspect of being veteran actresses making a cameo, but don't quote me on that. And then, for some reason, the cowardly lion from Wizard of Oz. You're gonna take me along with you. You're gonna help me find my courage. No, you're a real wimp. What we're gonna do is kick the shit out of you. <laughs> Fun fact. That's the director, Terry West, playing the lion. I think he may have had a fetish for something. I guess I had that coming. Then an admittedly hot spokesmodel who has one funny line. Well, I guess it's back to phone sex for me. We finally get one spoof of an actual scene from Lord of the Rings, which, depending on your sense of humor, is kind of funny. Uh, this guy eats a lot of asparagus. This is a shame. People back home would spend good money on a golden shower. Shh, quiet, guys. He's gonna hear us. I'm gonna spare you the sound effects of what follows. The Throbbits run off, and before the dork can chase after them, he is cornered by a Deliverance parody. Mercifully, this cut doesn't show us what the hillbillies do to the dork, though I cannot speak for the unrated version. It's not until at least halfway through the movie that we get to the pansy pony and meet the ranger Araporn. Barbara Joyce is the badass milf that I can only dream of someday aging like. While she kicks the shit out of some bad guys, it's time to spoof this famous scene. The G-string's evil magic transforms her into a lesbian sex wraith, causing her to seduce the barmaid. Now that's what I call a tip. While Araporn leads the Throbbits to the land of Lough Lesbian and defends them from dorks, Smirnoff discovers the treachery of his old mentor, Sourass. Sourass, old cock! 
Why, man? Why? Power, old man! You pinprick bugfucker! Blow it out your goddamn bunghole! Oh, I intend to. Bye. So as I said, this movie, uh... Well, look, if you want Shakespeare, rent Hamlet. These two wizards are easily the best characters in the movie and are not nearly in it enough, though they do get a pretty memorable wizard's duel near the end. Hold, Savaras! Enough! And woe unto he who first cries, Jesus H. Christ, what a stench! Oh, oh God, my eyes! Prepare to catch my mud! <laughs> to save us. No, you goddamn moron! Go get help! This guy's kicking my ass! With his ass! What a guy. They get rid of the G-string by handing it over to the director who drops it in the trash. We've come to destroy the G-string. Oh, great. Yeah, thanks. Also underutilized is the Gollum parody, here named Bollum, which, from what I can tell, doesn't really mean anything. It's just a name. He's played by John Link, who functions as a sort of poor man's Ron Jeremy. Because there is no justice in the world, Ron Jeremy is still alive while John Link has passed on as of 2021. Long as that G-string clings tenaciously to your yummy dildo sagins, I'll be watching you. <laughs> All right, there, Bob. Mr. Ballum. Yes. Got a complaint from a dildo sagins you've been stalking her. You're gonna have to come with us, pal. You guys are making a career move here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know people. I'll get you, dildo Staggins. I'll get you. And you little G-string too. The ending celebration reveals a couple of pretty predictable twists. Oh. Heck yeah, tricks. You mean you weren't killed in the Battle of Sauras? I had a battle with sour ass. <laughs> hey, Smirnoff. Dildo, I thought you destroyed that thing. Oh, uh, no, I gave an exact replica to that dude at the volcano. Ah, but why would you tempt the dark forces? To say nothing of a horny old wizard. <laughs> hey, if the G-string fits, wear it, baby. <laughs> Words to live by. And I genuinely don't know if this is supposed to be a sex scene or just some funny camera shots. As mentioned earlier, the bulk of this movie is very dull, with both the funny and steamy moments being few and far between. Far too much time is just spent on the characters trekking through the forest, meeting random people, and having drawn-out conversations about not very interesting subjects. Which to be fair, is pretty much what the book Fellowship of the Ring is like, so in that sense, this is the most faithful adaptation of Tolkien's work. The best characters are grossly underutilized despite the actors being right there. This is an opportunity that should have been easier than a throbbit. Smirnoff never even leads the Fellowship trekking through the woods like Gandalf does. He just kind of comes and goes sporadically. This is going to be as strange to say as it is to hear, but Lord of the G-Strings is the most feminist porno I have ever seen. Not that I've seen a whole lot of those, but from what I have, this movie is surprisingly empowering. Throbbit society appears to be a sort of horny matriarchy with the females dominating the males. There's also a lot more natural looks in this movie than you would expect. 
women of differing ages and body types are all treated as equally desirable. Whoa, hot stuff coming through. Hmm, I think I've met her in one of my nicer dreams. We tend to stereotype actors who work on these types of movies as being failures at life, but actually for much of the cast, this, this type of thing is not their only uh, or even their main career. Director Terry M. West is actually a director and author of indie horror stories. Star Misty Monday slash Erin Brown is likewise just as known for her indie horror films as she is for seduction cinema, with horror being her true calling. Much of the rest of the cast was also involved in the underground horror industry. Michael R. Thomas was also in the makeup department of several productions that you've definitely heard of, including Ghostbusters, Wayne's World 2, and Saturday Night Live. The real Michael Thomas. And here's the surprise. <laughs> this is not putty. This is not when he's not weaponizing his farts, John Paul Fidel is doing makeup and special effects for movies like Deja Vu and The Mist. Besides co-starring as Spam, A.J. Khan was also in the makeup department of this movie. Sadly, she passed away on Christmas Day of 2021 when she was only 44 years old. Her cause of death has not been released to the public. Both Michael R. Thomas and John Link have likewise passed on. May their memories, profound and otherwise, be a blessing. So, uh, who do I recommend this for? Um, anybody who's old enough who just wants to turn off their brain for an hour and a half. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not comedy gold. If you want a laugh-out-loud comedy, uh, you know, this is not Spaceballs or Monty Python. But if you're just... You know, if you and your friends are drinking and you just want to pop in something funny that you can giggle to, you can do worse. He's the first ever to escape the full wrath of my ass.